The triple jump is my favorite event, not just because I made it to the Olympics in it, but because there's always so much room for improvement no matter how experienced you are due to its complexity. In this tutorial, we're going to get really deep into the weeds about the second phase specifically, aka the step phase. And I'll break things down so that you can both learn deeply about the event and also increase your marks. But before we go any further, we've got to lay down some ground rules first. Number one, your goal in the triple jump is to maintain as much speed as possible from your approach through each phase and into your landing. This helps you maximize the distance of each phase. Two, the speed and distance of your hop phase, AKA your first phase, is determined by how well you execute your approach and your takeoff. Number three, by extension, the speed and distance of your step phase is determined by how well you come out of your hop phase. And lastly, you can't gain any more speed or distance through the phases once you've left the ground. You can only lose it. This means that when executed well, the fastest point of your triple jump will be as you leave the board in the hop. And thus, your step phase is determined by how well you execute your approach and your hop. Since this video is all about the step phase, let's start with a breakdown of one of my own jumps. This video is from the 2015 All African Games. What you're watching is my first competition in six weeks, so my technique wasn't as sound as it could have been. But the reason why I'm showing this video specifically is because I did do one thing exceptionally well. I maintained speed throughout each phase, especially the second phase. As you can see here, I didn't back off at all in my approach. I ran like hell through the board into my hop takeoff. Now remember, as I said earlier in the ground rolls, the fastest point in any jump will be at takeoff. Then, as you see, after I hopped off the board, I completed my position, i.e. I brought that hop thigh all the way to parallel while keeping my foot dorsiflex. Then as I approached the ground, I actively swept my leg, my foot and leg down and back beneath me and underneath my hips. What this does is it creates propulsion and it maintains the speed from the hop phase into your step. You can see that I'm doing this by how it looks like my foot is going backwards as I contact the ground. This is what it means by being active in your ground context from hop to step. Now's where things get pretty interesting. Because I was very active out of my hop phase, I lose very little speed into my step if at all. That, that put my body into a position I wasn't used to. This is why my step phase dangle like that. It wasn't on purpose. I carried so much speed that I wasn't prepared for and I held on for dear life. Now here's a pro tip. When you execute a jump really well, like in a personal best, you're putting your body into a position it's never been in before. This is where you've got to have the guts to avoid bailing out. Now because I didn't bail, I planted that foot very actively for my step into my jump, maintained my speed, and leapt out to another personal best. Alright, now for part two of the video. There are seven different drills I'm gonna show you, and each of these drills are all about training your body to be in good position throughout each phase so that when you hit a really good jump, you can make the most of it. All right, this is drill number one. It's called the right, right, left, left march. It's so simple as to be deceptive, but don't let it fool you, it's very effective. Ooh, look, I got bars. As I'm cycling my foot, I'm making sure that I make full ground contact with my foot, not just the ball of my foot. I'm also, and you can't really tell in the video, but I'm also really engaging at my core. If you're flying into your step phase and your core is weak, you will not be able to hold your thigh up. Better yet, you're also, again, putting yourself at higher risk for injury. You want to be able to ride your step phase out. So work on your core while you're doing this drill. Drill number two is the step phase march. Also very simple also focusing on full ground contact. It's pretty straightforward. You just wanna walk down the track or down the runway, bringing that thigh to parallel, keeping that core tight, and planting that foot down and behind you. This is just like you're mimicking bounding, but we're going in slow paces. These first two drills, these are perfect for beginners. There's no impact involved, and you can do these as many times as it takes for you to really get comfortable with the flow of the step phase. As you can see, I'm also doing it with a single arm motion. Whichever motion you do is up to you. If you're a single arm triple jumper, do the single arm. If you're a double arm jump, jumper, do the double arm. These next two drills are a little bit more advanced. They're the exact same movements we were just doing with the marches, but now we're gonna do them as bounds on the field. 
First one, as you see here, is the left, left, right, right bound. Same thing as we did on the runway, but we're now taking it to a bound, adding some speed, a speed component to it. This drill is really good because we're working on cycling out of what would be a hop phase into what would be a step phase, but we're doing it continuously, which challenges us to maintain momentum as we go along the field. You're planting that foot full, gra full footed ground contact so you can ride out the step on the other side while still also cycling. Once you've done that, we're gonna do the same type of drill with the steps, just step bounds. Again, driving that thigh to parallel. Same thing with the ground contact, I don't need to repeat it. As you watch me do this, you see I'm doing it with double arms and single arms. Remember, use whichever one matches your own personal technique. After you've begun to master doing those two bound sequences on the field, you can start to take that to the runway. We're gonna actually be doing pretty much the exact same thing except we're just trying to finish it into the pit, get a couple more reps and make it a little bit more applicable. When you get very experienced with this, you can start to put spikes on and do this on the runway, but for now, especially if you're new to this, keep it in your trainers. All right, this last drill is the four step jump and we're gonna apply everything we've been working on in terms of our extending our step phase as well as just being in proper technical position. All right, for setting up this four step jump drill, you can see I have a pine cone right there. That pine cone on the furthest right part of the screen marks the board. You can't see it, but the board is there. And because I was training alone, I just took four big steps backwards. As you can see, it's actually pretty accurate for me, but if you have someone that you're training with, you can always have them watch your steps. Anytime we're watching jumps, there's always a thousand different things we can break down. But for this particular video, remember we're staying focused on the step phase. So notice what I do as I come off the board. I bring that hop thigh completely to parallel. My foot's dorsiflex so that when I come out of that hop, as I continue to move forward, I put my foot down and that active drive to the ground is exactly what propels me into my step phase. Here's another angle from earlier to slow down a bit where you can see I actually caught that hop really well and it threw me into my step phase with so much speed and distance that I actually had to bail out because my foot, my toes were basically touching the sand. Now me coaching myself as I watch this, I'll say that my step phase was a tad bit high. It would have been better if I was even had a flatter trajectory which would have rode me out a little bit further. But for the sake of this video, what you need to take away is that me completing my hop cycle propelled me into my step phase very well. From that point, I just go along for the ride. I hold my position. I keep my step phase, my jump phase leg at parallel, stay dorsiflex, and I'm ready to just attack the ground just as I did with the hop going into my jump as you can see here. This was a lot of information, but I wanna recap a few points before you guys head out and try it for yourselves. First is that maintaining speed in the triple jump is everything. There are plenty of powerful jumpers out there who don't run crazy fast, but the successful ones don't lose momentum between their phases no matter how fast or slow they're running. Next, I wanna stress the importance of working backwards from your point of issue. If you're having problems with your step phase, look at your hop. Having problems with your hop, look at your takeoff. Having problems with your takeoff, look at your approach. A lot of the things that we're having issues with in this event, we can diagnose by things that came before it. And last but not least, definitely not least, probably should have been first, do a proper warm up. And I don't just mean jogging a few laps and putting your spikes on. You need to do a jump specific set of exercises to be able to make sure that you're getting the most out of your training and that your joints and muscles are ready for the demands of jumping. You don't warm up like a jumper, you're not gonna jump well. On that note, you can check out this video for a ground up warm up circuit that you can do as a jumper. This will get you ready to go do the drills in this video. Last but not least, if you are watching these videos and you're receiving some type of value from them, I appreciate your time. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button um, and I'll be able to continue to give you guys more content going forward. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers because once I do, YouTube unlocks a whole bunch more tools for me to be able to create for you guys a lot more consistently. Other than that, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.